watching No to Nine. Hello, and welcome to No to Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 79, X-Pages Dynamic View Control. One view to roll them all. Okay, today we have a brand new contributor on the show, and I'm really excited about getting this gentleman on. I've been trying to for quite some time, and it's none other than Paul T. Calhoun. Now, Paul Calhoun, he's just a great guy. He he works at NetNotes Solutions Unlimited, and his website and his email address is here and his Twitter, so you can easily contact him. And Paul is a world-class speaker. Uh, I originally uh, had world-renowned speaker, but I wasn't quite sure how to spell renown and the one I want to make fun of me. Um, so what he does, uh, among other things, is is he's all about the teaching, and and he's uh, part of the uh, a team that goes uh, and does all these view uh, boot camps for the view on X Pages Boot Camp and the Advanced X Pages Boot Camp. And if there's a conference with like the Lotus in the name or, or flavor of it, he's probably there speaking and probably has been for the last. X number of years, at least since I've been involved in, in, in this world. And, and he's also a, a, a course creator, and he did the X pages and, and Java courses, maybe some others, uh, for TLCC.com, which is a, a website a company where you can download training materials or so. So he, he really does specialize in training. And, and he is available for customized training and, and customized mentoring. And I, I don't think I... I highlight this enough about him and some of the other guys but but I mean I get some mentoring help from from Declan Lynch who I'm lucky enough to work with and and you know some other guys that I've, I've met from here they, they help me out now and then so if, if you don't have easy access to that you well, there are people available to give you mentoring help because X pages is not the easiest thing to pick up uh, so if you're stuck with a video or you're stuck with a project or something like that and 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 you 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 can you know I do recommend you reach out to some of these guys and you can probably engage them for reasonable prices uh, for the return of knowledge that you're gonna get with it so keep that in, in the back of your minds as you as you need help with uh, different projects that you're working on in the X pages world Okay, so we're going to go right into the demo here because uh, Paul can talk about this stuff way better than I can. Uh, but today's topic is going to be how to work with the dynamic view control to use one view control to show multiple views. Hello, my name is Paul Calhoun with NetNet Solutions Unlimited. I'm an IBM uh, advanced business partner out of Houston, Texas. At NetNet Solutions Unlimited, I provide mentoring, training, development resources on all things Domino development, specifically X Pages in Java. I'm very excited about uh, being able to do my very first Notes in 9 video for David Leedy with Notes in 9. Uh, the presentation that I'm going to do for you all today is called One View to Display Them All. I'm going to get in and I'm going to talk about using the Dynamic View panel from the Extension Library, one of my favorite controls. When uh, the extension library first came out and I saw the dynamic view panel, this addressed a, an issue that's uh, have been a problem for Domino developers since XPages came out. And that was that, you know, we've got in a traditional notes application that, you know, for example, the one that I have here that uh, is going to document all the best Texas barbecue places is that I've got a pretty standard notes, you know, Domino form design. And then I've got n number of views that are going to represent showing the data from the you know the documents created through that form in a different way and I typically are going to have more views than I have form design so uh, you know converting the you know form text pages is pretty straightforward but then you have to make some decisions about how many of those views that you're going to bring across um, and it can be pretty tedious to go in and start you know you know doing a one-to-one -one, you know creation of views that are going to map up to the views that were in the original application. And that's where the dynamic view panel comes in. But unfortunately, the dynamic view panel doesn't come with a couple challenges. You know, right out of the box, when you implement the dynamic view panel, two things that you're going to have to overcome are the fact that by default, um, it's not going to be able to display the documents correctly. And secondly, then when you do get it to open the documents, all of the documents open in edit mode by default. Uh, and those are two of the things that we want to overcome. So I've already you know, jumped in and started creating some of the design elements. So in this application, I've uh, created primarily just really two X pages. I've got one X page uh, that is my form design that's going to be each of the barbecue joints that uh, we created. And then instead of creating one X page for every view, so having my main X page and then by city and then you know, by city categorized, 
I want all of those particular views to be able to display through a single X page interface. And again, I can use the dynamic view panel to do that. So a couple of things in order to get this working correctly. Number one, before you even really get into the dynamic view panel, in the original form designs, uh, however many there are, you need to make sure that you've opened up those form designs, gone into their form properties, clicked on the propeller head option there, and on web access, you want to make sure that you've set those to the underlying X page that is going to be used to display that particular data. So whatever basically the value in the form field is, then that's the value that you're going to be able to set that to. So create the form based X pages, go into the original form design, set those up. And then when you click on the links in the dynamic view panel, then they're going to be able to find them completely over time. Once you've done that, then you can go back to the X page that you're going to have the dynamic view uh, panel on. And what you need to do in order to get the dynamic view panel to work is basically associate a view um, as a data source. And, and you're going to go and use the existing views. You'll notice that we've got, you know, four views basically. And, um, you know, each of those has a view alias. So we can actually go in and what we're going to do is set up those view aliases to pass in as uh, the view values for our dynamic view control. Now, one of the easiest way to do that is take advantage of one of the cool things in XPages, which are uh, scope variables. So the way that we've uh, implemented this is in the XPage itself, we're going in and in its events, in the on uh, before page load event, uh, we're creating a session scope variable. You know, session scope selected view, if that is equal to null, then go ahead and say, you know, session scope selected view equals joints. And, and what that's going to do is set the uh, uh, session scope variable to joints. And then that's what we're going to pass in to our actual dynamic view control. So when we go to the dynamic view control itself, then we, you know, we start looking at its particular properties. Then in the properties for the dynamic view panel, uh, if we go to, you know, for example, all properties or you know, we can actually go to the data then you're going to see that on the data tab, the view value is computed. And the computed value is simply returning the session scope selected view uh, session scope variable. Now that we've got that set up, that will actually load the joints view when uh, it, the page is first loaded. But then we need a way to you know, dynamically change that session scope variable to display all of the views in the application. So that's where I'm going to actually just use a standard combo box. Uh, and in the combo box, the, the data binding for that is going to be mapped to the session scope variable. And the variable name, again, is selected view. And then the values for that, my pick values, uh, are going to be actually the aliases of the original view designs that we looked at earlier. So therefore, that's going to then pass that in as the view name for the dynamic view control. And to set up the, the dynamic view panel, that's, that's really it. That's, that's all you really need to do. And if you did nothing but those things, then you, know, you would get something that looks similar like this. So I actually have a, a, a joints view that is not using the bean right now. So I can just kind of contrast the difference, compare and contrast those. So you'll notice that you know, this is one that I'm not using the bean on, but look, the, the session scope variable changes it. And as soon as I go back, then I'll be able to you know, switch back and forth. You'll see that it dynamically loads the view. It dynamically loads every column in each of those particular views. Uh, and everything works great. The issue starts to come into play, though, when I open up a document from any of these views. And you'll see that you know, by default, those open up in edit mode. And that's not really what I want to have. A couple of other things that I might want to do is, for example, I might want this main view to have checkboxes next to it. And I may want one of these views, like the category by city, I, I may want to suppress that URL column, you know, for whatever reason. And when you start looking at implementing something like that, you go back to your design, and, and that's just not really straightforward or very intuitive. When, when you go to the joints page and you start looking at the dynamic view panel, you're like, okay, well, there's got to be a property or something here. Uh, they do have the show checkboxes, but what you'll find is if you turn that on, then that adds checkboxes to every view. And, and that's not you know, something that you may want to have happen. You start looking through all of the other properties and you're looking for that, you know, open in and edit mode. And, you know, what the, the issue is, is that's not actually a property of the view, but that's a property of the first view column 
for that link. So that's kind of happening under the covers. And the default for that, if you look at the standard view control, is for documents to be open in edit mode. You actually have to say, I want them to be open in read mode. So how do you fix this? How, you know, how do you make this uh, an actual tool that you can use for your applications? Well, if we go back and we start looking at some of the properties of the dynamic view panel, you'll find that uh, one of the properties under the basics is this customizer bean. And what that does is allow you to write some Java code that works in combination with the dynamic view panel to actually control each of the uh, view output that is going to be displayed through the view panel to customize it, hence the name Customizer Bean. So I've already put this Customizer Bean together for you. In the, under the Java code element in 8.5.3, or if you're using 8.5.2, you can go to the Package Explorer and create a source folder and go through that process. For the most part, this code can actually just be used as cookie cutter code. Uh, there's, there's no real magic here. Uh, the, the big thing to know about this bean uh, is that it does have to extend this Domino View Customizer uh, underlying interface. So we've extended that and we've created this after uh, create column. We've overridden that one. Uh, we've gone down in and in here we're actually getting a map of our session scope variables just using the underlying JSF context. And, and that way I'm going to be able to know exactly which of those views they've selected in the, the combo box because that again is mapped to that session scope variable. This is the magic right here that's going to say, okay, I want to, when I click on a link in the dynamic view control, I want to open it up uh, in read mode, okay, so, you know, set doc, open doc is read only equal to true. And then every you know, link that I click, that's going to take place. And, and I could just leave it at that. That really gives me pretty much all I need for, you know, the majority of the views that I'm going to be working with. But those two other issues that I had, I want, for example, only the main view to have checkboxes, and I want the city by uh, category to not display the URL column. So you can actually go in and put specific information on specific views. So if I go and look at my session scope variables, and I say if this is joints and the, the column def is linked there, I can go in and say, you know, set show checkbox equal to true. You know, equals ignore case for the name column um, in my main view, joints. And, and if SVS contains value joints by you know, city category, if it's the category view, and the column is URL, then I can say set rendered equals to false. And that's going to turn off the rendering of just that column. So the, the code for this is not complex, but it does some pretty powerful things and really allows me to go in um, and do exactly what I want to do. So now... Um, if I was to go in and I was to, to render the new one that has the bean in it, notice that my main joints, okay, barbecue joints, they have the checkbox next to them so that I can operate on those if I want to. I can still go to, you know, joints by city. That has all the columns. We didn't customize that. But if I go to category uh, joints by city, notice that it's got the name, uh, but it doesn't have that URL column. So now, you know, via the customizer bean, I can go in there and I can actually use now the dynamic view panel uh, to display every view in my application exactly uh, the way I need. Um, but there's one more view in this application. Let's see, good barbecue outside of Texas. Hmm, that view seems to be empty. There's no documents in that view. That just, I think, attests, you know, is a testament to the fact that, you know, all good barbecues you're going you're gonna to find in Texas. Okay. So again, that was using the dynamic view panel from the extension library in an XPages application. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit, and now you'll know how to go in and implement this. Uh, the, my next show that I do is going to be uh, show you how to wrap all of this up inside of the layout region uh, from the extension library and use the navigator from the extension library so that you don't have to have the, the combo box. You'll actually be able to see the navigator. So once again, thank you all very much. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you in the next video. And that's the demo. Uh, I want to thank Paul for coming on the show. It's uh, I've been trying to get him on for a while, and I'm excited that he's finally here. Uh, he's indicated he has a bunch more shows you'd like to do, and, and I can't wait to see him. I'm sure you can either. Um, I, I, let's reiterate that Paul is available for hire and services. If you need any help, uh, just reach out to him, and I'm sure uh, he can he can take care of you. Uh, but as we're talking to Paul, uh, I can't help but 
mention some food-related items, because Paul's been going around on the Taking Notes podcast with Bruce Elgort and stuff, and, and kind of having some shots at me regarding barbecue. You see, Paul's from Texas, and Texans like to walk and talk and, and carry their guns, and they love to talk about how great their barbecue is uh, over everybody else in the world. I'm from Pennsylvania. We don't talk about our barbecue that much. We just cook it. We just eat it. We just have fun. So my book, Pennsylvania Wins, because we know how to just throw it on the, the smoker, a couple briskets here, and, and invite some friends over and have a couple cold drinks, sit back and relax. We don't need to show off or anything like, like those Texans do. So my book, We Win. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that right now. Uh, though I have been, some people have been making fun of me on Twitter for my chocolate uh, obsession because I happen to live next to Hershey's Chocolate, uh, and they might be next. So anyway, here's my contact information. You already have Paul's. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I thank you for your time and happy barbecuing.